Hello, in this tutorial, I'm gonna demonstrate how to sew this cute cloth nursery book from Jack Dempsey Needle Art. This soft fabric book makes a great personalized baby gift that can be treasured forever. In my example, I'll be doing the ABC cloth book, but you can use the same steps even if you're doing a different one like the Barnyard Friends here. Now let's go ahead and get started. Before you start assembling your book, you need to make sure that you've done all of the embroidery first. You also wanna make sure that you don't wash it or use any irons on it, or at least a hot iron, until the book is completely done, because we don't wanna wash away our lines or anything like that. Now you'll notice that there are six panels, and it's listed right here, this is panel six. You wanna first cut out each panel on this small dotted line, and you'll see it goes around the whole thing you just wanna make sure that you don't accidentally cut right along this dotted line in the middle because we're actually gonna need it and we want it to be a full piece. We need to add some sort of stability to our pages because if we just do it with fabric alone, it's a little bit too flimsy. So you can either do that with flat batting or interfacing and you need about three quarters of a yard. I'm gonna go ahead and use the flat batting here. If you're using interfacing, definitely follow those instructions that come with it. And you only need to do this four panels, one, three, and five. This is panel five. So you do the same thing for one and three. You're gonna lay it on top of your batting and interfacing. I'm gonna grab some straight pins. I'm gonna pin all the way around the perimeter of this and then cut it out. So I'm cutting out the batting the same size as panels one, three, and five. Before you remove your straight pins, we're gonna do a quick basting stitch just to hold each panel with our batting or with our interfacing. This is just gonna be a temporary stitch, again, just to hold everything together until we start stitching all the pieces together. So I'm gonna do this by hand. So it's a basting or running stitch, or you can also do it on your sewing machine by using the longest stitch available. So you're gonna come in about an inch into your panel. I'm coming from underneath where I have my batting or interfacing. And again, this is a running stitch, and it doesn't matter how big you make your stitches, this is just temporary. So I'm gonna come down and go across, and go down and go across just like this, and I'm gonna do it all the way around panels one, three, and five. After the basing stitch is done, you can then remove your straight pins, and we're gonna start pairing up the panels. So panel one is gonna be paired with panel two. Lay panel two on top of panel one, right side to right side. So that means nice embroidered side to nice embroidered side. So we're looking at the back side of this panel and then looking at the batting and the interfacing on the back of this one. You're gonna go ahead and start grabbing your straight pins, pinning it together. Make sure all your raw edges match and you can pin it like that. And I'm gonna go around the whole thing, but I'm also gonna make a mark down here at the bottom with some straight pins creating sort of an X like this. And you want to have a two inch gap in between your X's. So everything else is gonna be pinned like this, but I just have this at the bottom. This means that I'm gonna start sewing here on my seam allowance. I'm gonna go around the whole thing and then stop when I get to this X. Anything in between the X's, there's no stitches. That way we have an opening, so we're able to flip our panels inside out after we finish stitching it. Repeat the same process with the other panels. So panel three is gonna be matched with panel four. Place them right side together and pin. Don't forget to leave that two inch gap with your pins at the bottom. Panel five is gonna be matched with panel six. Same thing, right side together and pin. I'm gonna start at one X. And don't forget to do a couple of back stitches and you're gonna do the same thing when you get to your other X. That just creates a knot. And I'm sewing on these dashed lines that are on the perimeter of each panel. And that's gonna give you a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So I'm doing one and two right now, but then I'm just gonna repeat this process for pairs three and four and five and six. To sew a nice corner, what you're gonna do is get to the end of one side. So I'm just about there. Once I get to the end, I'm gonna put my needle down, so right there. Lift my foot and rotate the fabric and now I can start with the other side. 
cut off all the corners after you finish doing your seams. Just make sure that you don't cut any of your stitches in your seams because we don't want to create a hole. But we want to cut off this excess fabric at the corner here so when we flip our panels right side out, there won't be any fabric bunching and you'll get a cleaner looking corner. We're now going to flip out each pair of panels. So we have this opening and all you do is just bring the fabric through so everything is right side out. All my panels are flipped right side out. So you can see the right side is now on both sides. Now you can go ahead and remove those basting stitches. We no longer need them. Next, we're gonna be focusing on this area here because we still have this opening and we need to stitch it close. To close up this area, I'm gonna be doing a slip stitch. So first I'm gonna do the prep work and this is how I do it. I'm gonna take each side and I'm gonna fold it right on that same dash line. So it's gonna be nice and even as we go across and you won't be able to tell it's even there. So we'll do the top first. I'm just folding it along the dash line. We'll throw in a couple of straight pins to hold it. Do the same thing over here. And then I'm gonna repeat the process with the bottom. And the bottom seems like it's folding actually pretty well already. And then once I have my straight pins in, I'm gonna pull it bring the pins together so my fold lines are together. And then I can just, instead of having two pins here, I could just take one out and use one to bring both sides together. The slip stitch is gonna be done by hand. So you're gonna to wanna to grab a needle and thread. I'm gonna go ahead and use a contrasting color so it's easier for you to see what I'm doing, but you definitely wanna use a matching one. So I'm gonna start right here where my opening is beginning. Here's my needle. And I'm gonna grab a little bit actually below the fold, just on one side. Let's pull this other side out of the way. And come up so the needle comes up right on that folded edge. And again, I'm not grabbing the side closest to the camera, it's the back side here. But you can start on either side, whatever you feel comfortable, just one. And there's my knot, and I'm gonna kinda tuck that inside there so it's hidden, that way you can't see it. Now I'm on this side, so now I'm gonna go back to this other side over here, and I'm just gonna grab a little bit of fabric right on that fold line, and I pull it all the way through. Now obviously since I'm using red, you're gonna be able to see it, but once I pull it close, you should barely be able to see that stitch. Now I'm gonna go back to the first side, grab just a little bit of fabric right along that folded edge, and I'm gonna pull it, and when I pull it close, you'll see that knot disappears. And then go back to this other side. So you're just going back and forth between the folded sides. Do one side and then do the other side, and you're gonna do this until your opening is closed. And then just tie a knot, and make sure you do it for all three sets of panels. Now we're ready to start stacking our panels. So I'm gonna lay panel two side up. So we have panel side one on the bottom towards the table. Then you're gonna take three and four, but lay it on top of here so panel four is right side up. And you'll notice panel four is a little bit smaller than this panel here. That's perfectly normal. And you wanna make sure you're lining it up with the center line here, and you can just center it. Then I'm gonna take panels five and six, and place it on top as well, and making sure that panel six is also facing up, and again, you're gonna center it. Do another basting stitch right along the center. Again, I'm doing this by hand, just to tack everything together so you can make sure on placement and make sure that all pages are being stitched on the center line. It'll also help when we go to our sewing machine to keep this from shifting around on us and keep everything in place. If the placement is good, you can then stitch on that center line with your sewing machine using a regular length stitch. Don't forget to back stitch at the top and bottom of the book. And once that's done, you can go ahead and remove that basting stitch. At this point, your cloth nursery book is pretty much complete. The last thing you need to do is to soak your book in some cold water. You usually wanna do that for a few hours just to get out all the blue guideline marks then you can let it line dry, and then you can iron it. So then you'll end up with a nice book, and you can either keep it or give it as a gift.